I just don't know where Fisker plays in this market longer term. And if it. That's a silly comment. That's a silly comment there. Watch to the end of this video and you can win yourself $100 cash. And now on with a review. Time for another stock review. This time we are talking Fisker, FSR. We're going to do a deep dive into the financials. We're going to look at the balance sheet, the numbers. We're going to give a profitability score. We're going to show you the solvency score. We're also going to share with you the website, which does look pretty good. Some breaking news on the stock as well. We're also going to do a full back test. If we put $10,000 into uh, the S&P compared to Fisker, how does it perform? Look at the competition. The the um, op uh, the options positions, the uh, short positions, see who's buying on the inside, see who's, see who's selling on the inside. So let's get straight into an FSR full review. If you are new here, please do click subscribe or ring the bell. Make sure that you do turn the notifications on. That way you won't miss any of the good stuff. And uh, also tap the like button if you like the video. If you don't like it, please click the down like button. I don't care what you do, uh, just do something. I might not like you, so it's perfectly okay okay to dislike my video, but do something as we aim to get the most engaged channel on YouTube TV. In fact, we have 98% of our live viewers, our members, the highest engagement rate of any channel on YouTube TV. We're very, very proud of that. Right. So we're going to go through all the numbers in great detail. We are going to start nice and simple and then get more detailed as we go. This is the second time that we've reviewed Fisker. I did an earlier review. You can go and look back on my previous review. If you are a member of my channel, you can ask me to do a review. It's a member service. I provide it free of charge as my to my members. Uh, you can go and check it out if you'd like to. Um, but anyway, let's go straight into FSR Fisker and see whether we can give the give this a buy, hold, sell rating. The reviews I do are the most honest on YouTube TV. They all appear on this platform here, which is Alpha Spread. All of my reviews above, in preference to, for, to Bloomberg, to Yahoo Finance, CNBC, all of them, they are more honest and review, uh, uh, honest reviews. I'm not paid by anyone to do it. Uh, I'm not sponsored by anyone to do it. I provide it for free. And all of them appear on this website above the others because they are uh, more preferred. Okay, so are you ready? Let's get straight into a review. And if you want to use my software, there'll be a link in a minute above and below in the description of this video, and you can get access for free. My members get a lifetime discount, which makes my membership completely free. Okay, let's have a look at Fisker right now. So for those of you who don't know, what is Fisker? Fisker engages in uh, in building and enabling an automotive business model, um, which in uh, which involves vehicle development, customer experience, and sales and services. It also designed to develop and manufactures eco-friendly electric vehicles. Let's see a bit more. Um, the company was founded by Henrik Fisker, Gita Gupta uh, Fisker in 2016, headquartered in California. The listed name is FSR Fisker. Okay, let's look at the basic line chart. And as you can see, IPO back here in 2020, three years now it popped up. We had that EVX acceleration. And then, of course, it's been selling off. Now it's very much a penny stock. Uh, it, uh, it, uh, I don't know if it's reverse split yet. We'll find out later on in the video, but, uh, it's a penny stock now. Anything under $5, it's a penny stock. If it goes below a dollar, it'll have to do a reverse split to keep it on the index. And we're getting close to that now. Um, let's have a look at the, the details. If you bought it on margin, if I, I use margin a lot, if I use, if I use margin, it'd be a hundred percent maintenance. It'd be high risk. Uh, regarded as a very volatile stock. Uh, it's a small company. It's um, uh, half a billion dollars. 569 million is the market cap. Remember, that doesn't value the company. We'll do the valuation in a minute. This is just the share price that people are prepared to pay for the stock. All right. Uh, it's uh, $1.90 is the high today and eight sixty seven is the 52-week high. Uh, negative price-to-earnings ratio. So if what you're paying for this, it's losing money um, and uh, the price that you're paying in relationship to the earnings that you earn from the stock is negative $1.22. Um, so it's losing money. However, you need to compare this to other uh, EV companies or similar in, in the same time period and see how they compare uh, for valuation before you decide that that's a good or bad position. 
Low today, 162. 52-week low, 135. 52-week low, 135. So we're near a 52-week low at the moment. It has been slightly lower. Of course, no dividends to growth stock. Uh, average volume, 29 million. Uh, volume today is 27 million. So it's above, above average today so far, even though it's below the average. It's only 9.45 in the morning central time. So I anticipate this potentially beating the average today. A lot going on. Why? Well, we'll cover the news in a minute. Now, Morningstar. I don't think Morningstar do a very good job. I'll be honest rubbish. Uh, a lot of these analysts are paid and sponsored and have their own agendas. I don't like it. Um, they're saying it's it's a hold or a sell, 23% uh, buy. Well, I will give you my review in a minute, which is unbiased, unpaid, and it's used using just the numbers without any outside influence whatsoever. We'll come on to that in a minute. The company is uh, after the after initial in 22, uh, Q, Q2, things have slowly improved, uh, as we can see, uh, steadily improving. Uh, Wall Street, as always, are rubbish at analyzing stocks because they are traders, day traders, essentially. They're not interested in the future. They're interested in today. Uh, if you go to Wall Street, it's all done on computers now anyway, and they're just buying and selling every five minutes. There's no actual looking at the company, talking to anybody and getting a full picture where the company are going. So as you can see, they are very bad at analyzing the stock. They're out by out a lot every time. The uh, Wall Street is the light red, and the actual uh, achievement or loss is the company is the uh, the the, uh, the bright red. And as you can see, they missed on earnings, missed on earnings, beat on earnings, missed on earnings. But Wall Street are miles off. They've got no idea how to value this company at all. Anyway, moving on down, who are, who are we in bed with? This tells me who is buying the stock. Who else is buying the stock? So should we be concerned? This gives you volatility of the stock. Well, you are you are in with the worst, one of the worst companies you could possibly be in, Lucid. Without doubt, probably the best EV in the world. However, it's run by Peter Rawlinson, who robs half a billion dollars every year from the company. One of the highest paid, I think it's the fourth highest paid paid. CEO in the world, and he's driving his company bankrupt or he's driving it private. That's what he's doing. Uh, it's, he doesn't even care if he sells cars. He even said it on the earnings. We know because we cover all the earnings live. We listen in. And he doesn't seem to care about selling cars. He just wants to build a brand. Well, building a brand is very well and good, but it doesn't pay me as a shareholder a damn bloody thing. So uh, the first thing he could do is stop paying himself half a billion dollars a year in a company that loses half a million every time it sells a car and start sorting himself out. So you are in with lucid investors. The fact that you are in with lucid investors will tell you the stock is volatile. It'll be driven down, may have a lot of short interest because these are all gamblers, period. The manipulation gone berserk. Rubbish. Uh, Nicola, not doing very well at all. Um, I, I, potentially has a good product, but again, being driven into the ground. Uh, workhorse, I don't know enough about it. Neo, well, it's a Chinese stock. A, a Chinese stocks are always, uh, you know, uh, manipulated on steroids. Um, charge point, I haven't done one for a while, so I'd need to update my thoughts on that one. And Quantum Scape, I don't have any thoughts, but I, it, it tells you straight away that you are in bed with very volatile stocks. No question about it. All right. Now, before we go into the balance sheet, the debt position, the loans, the inside trading, uh, profitability score, solvency score, let's look at the latest information around the company. See what's going on. Now, tap the like button if you like this video and you want to share it out and don't forget to subscribe. We are making this during a live video. I'm not like other YouTubers. I'm not even a YouTuber. Actually, I'm an entertainer who uses YouTube to build a TV show. Um, I do all my videos live, unedited. Uh, this is how it will come out at the end. Um, apart from enhanced audio, I compress the audio. Uh, apart from that, this is as it is. So if you want to comment in the live video, you can. Members can do that. So it's not edited or changed or adjusted at all. It is as it is. Right, let's go and look at the website. This is their website. Quite a funky little website. Uh, this shows all their cars. Now, I was looking at a review of one of their cars a couple of days ago. And one thing I actually found quite interesting, uh, they are very different than Tesla, very, very different uh, vehicle inside. Um, one of the things I actually quite liked uh, was the, uh, the roof of, of one of their models is all solar panels. Admittedly, 
It's only $1,500, sorry, 1,500 miles of range a year up if you got eight hours of the sunshine. Now, probably uh, if you've got a nice new car, you're not leaving it out on the road. You're leaving it in a garage uh, undercover. So how useful that would be, I don't know. When you're driving, of course, obviously you're outside, but uh, the 1,500 miles a year that I was reading about is based upon you having eight hours a day. So that's basically leaving the car in sunlight. How, however, as someone who has solar panels on my house in the UK, I know that you don't need direct sunlight anymore. Ambient light is good, is is now effective. Uh, you don't need to be bright sunlight. Uh, ambient light is fine. But I don't know if I had a new car, if I would leave it outside, or I would have my car in the garage. So it'd be in the dark all day long anyway. But anyway, nice little feature. I like that, and there, there was a few other features I kind of liked about it. But there is the car. It gives you an idea of what Fisker is all about, FSR. But let's have a look at this latest news, which is, um, you would have thought, presented some volatility, some opportunity in the stock, even though it's gone down to a near all-time low again. This is the information, as provided just a few days ago, a couple of days ago, by the, uh, the company itself. This is the investor page. Some very good information here. Fisker provides uh, December to 23 business update as it delivers grow over 300%. Now, before we get too carried away, when we hear numbers like 300%, that sounds great. If Tesla had said they're up 300%, that'd be, that'd be, that'd be mental, right? Uh, but if you've only sell, if you only make one car, I'm not saying they do, but if you make one car and you now sell three, you're up 300%. So we need to put that into, into context. Of course, this is their page, their investor page. They want to use a headline like that, which is great. However, I want to know what that really means. Is it 300% of a million cars? Now they're selling 3 million cars? Well, of course not. But uh, anyway, let's have a little look at the information here. Um, 10,142 uh, 10, Fisker produced in 2023 and approximately 4,700 vehicles delivered. So obviously this is very, very small in comparison to Tesla, but that doesn't matter. Two key software updates since November. The Fisker Ocean SUV won six awards in 2023. I don't take awards as much as uh, something to get excited about. We all know about the JD Power rubbish, where they are paid to say how great a company is, and Chevrolet every single year win the JD Power Award. I think it's flipping bonkers. Who the hell is JD Power? Well, if you research it, JD Power is a marketing agency. So it's like me making up an award going, the Martin Lucas Best Car of the Year Award, and then someone paying me a million dollars, and I'll say, all right, you're the winner of the Martin Lucas Best Car of the Year Award. Pre pretty ridiculous, really. But anyway, people love all that stuff. JD Power says your car's the greatest car. So I don't care that... Um, someone got an award. I don't care because very often it's just made up rubbish. But I'm, I'm more interested in uh, people buying the cars and making money. Is the company run profitab profitably, not like uh, Lucid? Because I'm a shareholder, not a fan club. I'm not buying a badge or a t-shirt. I just want to make money, right? Anyway, uh, first Fisker Ocean Sport delivered in the UK. Fisker Ocean delivered deliveries commenced in Canada. Plan to further accelerate uh, deliveries and increase sales expected to be announced in January 24. This is good. So why are we getting the sell off? Well, with a stock, uh, with a stock like uh, Fisker, because even if it's a great business, and we'll come on to the business in a minute, even if it's a great business, lucid shareholders buy it. And NEO shareholders buy it. So it's going to be volatile. Now, what this could mean is we get a massive drop before it pumps when the deliveries come and the earnings comes. Because the earnings will tell you how much money they make. And if my one of my members requests it, we will cover the earnings live on the show. And we'll actually see, you know, what the what what, what the earnings has produced for the business. But anyway. Very, very important. Loyalty program enhanced and sales delivery and services call center opened. All right. Okay. Henrik, the uh, the CEO, and I, I, of course, we do have a Meet the CEO series, so I would invite uh, Henrik Fisker to be on my show, to reply to this, to phone in live, be part of the show, and uh, I will invite you. I will send you an email. I would love if you would uh, be on my show. 
We began a revenue generating company in 2023, but we also faced numerous challenges. Emerging from COVID-19 created several issues for our supply chains. We can't live on that anymore. That's old news. We can't focus on that anymore. We're going to move on from that. But we have largely overcome them. Yes, everybody has. And we have delivered approximately 4,700 Fisker Oceans. This accomplishment represents substantial revenue. As we accelerate our delivery pace in 2024, I'm excited to see faster growth. We have solid business and relatively low overheads and an award-winning vehicle that com customers enjoy. I am looking forward to a year of new milestones and opportunities for the Fisker brand and everyone on our team. Increase in deliveries and revenue. After uh, homo... Uh, ho Homologation delays, I've never heard of that word before, uh, in Europe and the US as we navigated supplier issues. Yes, that was a couple of years ago now. Fisker ultimately produced 10,142 in 2023. Customer deliveries began in June with significant deliveries commencing in September and October. The company grew deliveries by 300% from Q3 to Q4 and the total deliveries are approximately 4,700 with the majority being Fisker Ocean 1 launch edition vehicles priced at 68999 uh, comparably priced in other markets. Uh, Fisker began deliveries in Canada in December and is now operating in 12 markets worldwide. Right and dry vehicles have worked, uh, have delivered yay, to the United Kingdom. There we go. That's the side that the steering wheel needs to be on. And in December, the UK saw the delivery of the first Fisker Ocean Sport, the company's entry level trim. OK, so things moving up there. We like that. Uh, we like that. We don't need to go down to any more of that. So we're starting to get deliveries. This is good. Now let's look at the numbers. Okay, let's go straight into the numbers. Tap the like button if you've not yet done it. Okay, so we'll look at the price before we do. We can see the price is uh, dropping crazy today, down 8.86. Uh, we don't like to see that, but that could present opportunity if the business is well funded. Let's have a look. Here we go. What you've all come for, the real numbers, the valuation. Now then. Okay. Now, before you get excited, the valuation does say undervalued. However, that is not enough information to go on. That's what this review is for. Best case scenario, 100% undervalued. It's worth $569. Now, how do we get to these numbers? $290, it's 99%. Worst case scenario, still 100%. Okay, how do we get to these numbers? These numbers are not based upon uh, analyst reviews, opinions. They're based on numbers, algorithmic software. So what I, this is what I use looking at the balance sheet, the numbers, the profitability, the margins, and everything else. This could be a seriously undervalued company. However, there are other things other things at play here, and uh, we'll come on to that in a moment. Do we have a valuation? Yes, we do. We have a warning. FSR's intrinsic value estimate is unreliable. So don't use that as a, as a, as a go to market. Let's buy some shares. It's unreliable because it's based only on its multiples and doesn't have any DCF valuation. That's because the state of the business doesn't have information we can plug in to the software to tell us the true value of the company. So it doesn't mean to say it's wrong, but it's unreliable. You can't use it as a, I'm going to buy loads of uh, Fisker. We need to go and look at the balance sheet. Okay. Q3, 23 earnings. Let's have a look at this. Fisker has achieved notable milestones, ramping up vehicle production by 430% to, that's different than the 300%. Anyway, this is, uh, this is as reported in their earnings, uh, not, um, not just that headline on their website, to 4725 in Q3 from 1022 in Q2 and delivering over 1,200 vehicles in October, surpassing the entire third quarter. Great. Good so far. Calibration such as one with Foxconn to manufacture the unique pair model in Ohio and an agreement with Tesla, Tesla for charging access. Good. 
they can now use the Tesla services. Now, I'd like to know, this is good for Tesla, I'd like to know if they have to pay a licensing fee to Tesla to do it. I can't imagine Tesla were going, yeah, you can use our, our network for free. Tesla make money from the charging network as well as selling cars, solar, robo taxis, da di da di da di da di da So, again, uh, but rem remember, Tesla might be the better option, but it's overvalued right now. It's overpriced, all right? Whereas this could be undervalued and present you with an opportunity, all right? Uh, underlying underlying advancements and optimism about Fisker's future. Great. The uh, but again, let's take that in context. Very very important. Very very important. Ford are now able to use the Tesla's the Tesla chargers, but it's not good for their future. They're losing money and they're actually now uh, ramping down production. So that doesn't mean to say it's a great for your future just because you can use the Tesla network. Ford can, and they're ramping down. Ford, I don't think, can survive. I think they'll go bankrupt. Anyway, that's my uh, that's an, 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 another thought. So don't get all excited about optimism of Fisker's future just because they can use Tesla's uh, charges. The third quarter bought a revenue of uh, $71.8 million, primarily from ocean uh, sales, despite a net loss of $91 million. So we're losing money when we make cars. The problem is, is how we make cars, not can we make a car, how do we make the cars. That's where Tesla win. And they have other things that make them money. The production ramp and delivery scale demonstrate a strong demand and a, uh, a push towards a stable supply chain, aiming to shrink delivery timeframes for customer satisfaction. As Q Q3 ended, Fisker held a robust balance of 625 million in cash and restricted cash. Now then, it doesn't sound like a lot of money in cash to me. However, we'll uh, we'll have a look in a minute and see how that uh, how that adds up. Anyway, let's have a look at the financials. Okay, if you're enjoying this video so far, do smash the like button. It really really helps the channel. Shares it out to more people, and don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell. All right, okay. Revenue, as you can see here, things are improving, or at least. Expected, I beg your pardon. These are these are the these are the expectations, the estimates. Where we are today is here, December thirtieth, just a couple of days ago. December thirtieth estimate was uh, three hundred ninety-five. Um, the estimate we're still showing estimates here. Uh, this is interesting. We don't have a report yet. Uh, estimates, um, September 29th. This is showing estimate. I don't know why this is. Uh, this is interesting. But anyway, the uh, expectations is uh, a, start, a steady rise uh, over the coming um, periods. Right now, we are here. Oh, here we go. That's what I was looking for. June 29th, we had 1.4 million. September 29th, 296 million, up 155%. So you can see uh, revenue is increasing. Operating income, operating income is increasing and expected to continue. Okay, up 0 0.01 on the most recent range. Net income has improved point, uh, plus 4% on the most recent range. Okay, from losing money to uh, potentially... In uh, when, are, when are we expecting to do this? 26, cash positive in 26, June 26. Okay, two years from now, we expect to be cash positive, okay? All right, free cash flow, negative 3% on the most recent range, okay? Capital expenditure. We're going to have some uh, new reports soon. When are they, let me just have a look. When are they actually, uh, when's their... February the 26th. February the 26th is when we need to review, uh, re-look at this and see what their numbers are. February the 26th is their expected after hours um, earnings. We could cover that live if requested and we'll see how these figures update. Anyway, capital expenditure, they're increasing by 19%. They're spending money investing, uh, operating cash flow up 5% up on the most recent range. Okay. What about the balance sheet? Very, very important now. Um, the balance sheet, they've got 1.7 billion in assets. C 
cash is 470 million. So, percentage terms, they've got a reasonable amount of cash, percentage terms. But from a company that needs to um, build out and uh, reduce costs and uh, scale up, that's not a lot of cash. Um, let's see what their debt position is. But uh, of their overall position, though, it's a fair amount of cash of their assets. Okay. Liabilities. Long-term debt. Ouch. 662 million. Okay. 1.3 billion in liabilities. And uh, just under half of their liabilities is long-term debt. That's not good. However... That can also be a catalyst because as rates come down, that's going to affect the business because with long-term debt and then rates come down, that's a, that's a positive for you, right? You can really uh, benefit from that. But as you can see, long-term debt is 50% of their liabilities. Short-term debt, I could live with. Long-term debt, uh, it's not good. That's not great. That's going to give them a uh, solvency issue. Um, th they haven't got enough cash to pay off their debts. Uh, they've got, uh, what have they got in cash? 470 million and they owe, uh, long-term debt is 600. So they've got three quarters of the money to pay off their debt. Most businesses don't uh, pay off their debts. They they use it like I do with margin. But um, anyway, the balance sheet isn't great. They're not, they haven't got loads of cash sitting around uh, to do a lot with, and they've got a lot of long-term debt. But again, that could be a positive if we can um, if we can continue servicing the debt, and then rates do come down. Remember, they don't. There's no guarantee that rates are going to come down, even though I'm planning on it. Uh, anyway, solvency score. Uh, now, the, sorry, the efficiency of the company. Now, this is important. Their margins are terrible. Their margins are terrible. Uh, Amazon, uh, um, uh, Tesla can crush this. Um, their margins are terrible at the moment. They're losing money on their cars. They're not making a good, they're not making anything at all. But uh, their margins are no good at the moment. That could improve, of course, the spending, the investing, so on and so forth. But anyway, their operating margin is actually getting worse. We were 21%. We're now at 13%. Um, it'd be interesting to see where we'll be in February when we get the latest figures. But anyway, operating margin, negative 39,104. Uh, as you can see, we're losing money. Uh, margins, um, uh, operating margin has improved here. It was a lot worse, um, but nevertheless, we're still losing a lot of money. Um, but, you know, that, that can happen. This is what worries me. This is what worries me. Uh, ex negative operating income. We're losing money. We haven't got that much cash. We've got debt, which means the solvency score is low. Now, I, I, I just want to say, though, it isn't dire. It's red. It's 29 out of 100. It's not good, but we've seen lower and then companies do better in, in time. So it's not the worst, but you are buying a very much uh, a company with debt, not making any money, very low margins. In fact, no margin at all. Um, losing money, not much cash, long-term debt. They need interest rates to come down, which they will. But this also presents an opportunity to buy the stock lower. However, it's so low, they're going to probably have to reverse split because if we're, we're at 160 right now, um, if we see we're at 160 right now, if it goes below one for several months, it will need to do a reverse split to stay on the index, which is always a bad thing for any company to do. Forget that, put that to one side. They might also need to uh, raise funds and dilute the stock thereby the shareholder gets stuffed. Now, it's okay to raise money and dilute. Nothing wrong with doing that. It's good for the long term of the business. However, it does hurt a shareholder if you're already in. If you buy after the split, then fine. But if you buy um, before, sorry, be the, 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 the dilution, if you buy uh, before the dilution, you end up getting uh, less value for your share. So you have to be very, very wary of that. 
So is it a buy from me? Well, we need to look at the short position and the um, also the uh, sentiment of the stock before we can come to that conclusion. Anyway, Wall Street, 598 upside. Hey, we like that. Best case scenario, well, we're not in that position. We're more around here. 150% upside, but we've also got a 39% downside at the lowest forecast. So it's probably somewhere in this range here. Maybe 100% would be where I would think. So it could double. 160 could become $3.20 uh, or whatever. It, it can double, okay? All right, great. That's probably where it can go, mid to mid to short, mid to long term, like at six months or 12 months. That's where it could go. Uh, I'm going to give you the link later on in this video where you can go and compare the margins to General Motors, Rivian, Ford, and all the rest of it. Uh, you can see here, I'll give you the link to all of these and you can compare their margins, their debt position, and you can see who, um, what their moat is and can they be beat by competition and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, inside trading. Who's buying on the inside? Who's selling on the inside? During the last 12 months, uh, Fisk Insider bought 10 million, but sold 18 million worth of shares. The last transaction was made on March 28th, 2023. That's good news by the chief executive, uh, chief technology officer, chief uh, CTO, who sold uh, who sold 61,000 worth of FSR shares. All right, okay. So we've not had anything since March 28. So we've not had anything. Now, I like to look at this because I want to buy a company before the insiders start buying. Not before they start selling, before they start buying. So I don't mind there's nothing here. There's been no action for a while. Um, that's It doesn't tell you too much, but it tells you that the sentiment is likely net, is positive if we start seeing insiders buying the stock. But we need to know how much they're buying and, and, and to get a real sentiment of the stock. Anyway, uh, there's, there's been no action recently. Uh, nothing at all. No, nothing at all. But uh, over a year ago, we did have some action here. Uh, back in um, back in uh, February of 23, so nearly a year ago, we're, we're, we're January now at the making of this video, uh, 3 million was sold. And uh, sorry, that, yeah, that, that particular transaction there was 3 million. Let me scroll down. February, yeah. Uh, this particular transaction here was... Uh, Three million, and then we've got uh, bought in as well. But that's a long. T that's January twenty six of uh, twenty three. Long time ago. Nothing really significant recently. Okay. Okay. Now then. Now then, this is what's important. Forty two percent short. Just like what I said at the beginning of this video. You're in bed with lucid investors. You're in bed with the scammers. You're in bed with the uh, the shorters. You're in bed with false information, pumps and dumps and mullins and God knows what else. That doesn't mean to say Fisker is a bad company. I don't know yet. I've not made friends yet with anyone who works there. I will endeavor to do so. I'll reach out and invite them to come on my show. However, 42% short interest. Anything above 20, anything above 20 is excessive potential short squeeze with volume. We're talking about short squeezes at 21% with Virgin Galactic. We're at 42. But before you get too excited, remember that um, GameStop uh, squeezed at 100%. That's when it went berserk. Okay. It's rare that you get big squeezes like that as well. Very, very rare. But 42% is extremely, extremely high. Extremely high and could trigger, with volume, a short squeeze. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. Do we have the volume? Well, let's have a look at the stock again uh, and let's see. We have got, right now, the average volume uh, is 36 um, million. Sorry, I beg your pardon. Oh, hang on a minute. The average volume is 28 million. Today's volume is 36. So yes, we have volume today. If we get, um, and let's look at the, um, the bids and the asks. Yo, 
We are positive. The bids, more buying than selling at the moment. More buying than selling at the moment. And the volume is high. If we get uh, um, some more bids come in and we get some more volume, this is likely to squeeze. You can see it's just coming up from here. Okay. So a potential short squeeze is on the cards. Volume is increasing and uh, no doubt about it, things are looking good. My portfolio is looking great, by the way, today. Uh, consistently beating the, uh, the market and consistently beating Warren Buffett. Anyway, which is nice. Anyway, FSR is looking like a potential short squeeze, but let's go now to the, um, the sentiment of the stock and the news around the stock. How is it, how is it getting out? Uh, let's have a look. Uh, we've got a report here one month ago. Uh, let me have a little listen. These reviews are not always the best. Uh, they read off scripts, these guys, and they're paid to do it. So let's have a little look. See what they say here. Sure. Extending losses in pre-market trading after reporting a huge revenue miss in the third quarter results. The electric vehicle startup also slashed its full year production forecast as it struggles to ramp up deliveries to the U.S. This comes as other EV makers like Tesla, GM, Lucid, they have warned of slowdowns in the market. Tesla CEO Elon Musk pointing to higher rates as one of the contributing factors in the company's latest earnings call. You're taking mm. a look at shares of Fisker, ticker symbol FSR here this morning, taking a hit on the head. It's down by about 17% here in pre-market trading. And one of the huge things to watch, of course, is the continued price wars, but also how much that is going to impact margins. And at the same time, you've got to be delivering, producing and delivering vehicles. And that's where if you're not a Tesla, if you're not a Lucid, even if you are a Lucid, you've struggled with that delivery and then production as well on the same side. Does Fisker need to be in this market? And it's not, I'm not trying to be flippant. Uh, you have a, you have a, well, we have uh, a major ramp up in EV production in this country, Ford, General Motors, and they're not putting out garbage. These are credible cars with strong mileage or, or range capabilities, amazing in-feature uh, technology. You have Polestar out there, I think, grabbing a lot of market share. Tesla doing what Tesla does, now trying to lower the cost of its production. So it come out with more, I think, cheaper vehicles, a Cybertruck. I just don't know where Fisker plays in this market longer term. And if it- That's a silly comment. That's a silly comment there. That's obviously someone who's paid to promote one side of the, of the argument. Does Fisker need to be in this market? What an absolute ridiculous comment made by somebody who completely does not understand the EV market at all. Anyone who's followed EVs in detail like I have done and listened to Elon Musk speak on earnings, as I do all of them, you will know that all the EVs, all the EV manufacturers on the planet cannot supply enough and, uh, and uh, get us all in EVs tomorrow. It can take many, 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 many years for that to happen. The infrastructure to be built out and all the rest of it. Um, so we need as many EV companies as possible to be in the market. What a ridiculous statement. Do they need to be in the market? We've got all these other companies making cars. We don't need any more. What a ridiculous statement. Now, obviously, I uh, wouldn't be surprised if he's one of the shorters and he's trying to drive the stock down and using his appearance on TV to talk rubbish. That's, a, that's one of the most ridiculous statements from an analyst I've ever heard. It does. And I look at the finances of this company. Here's a company in the past three months that blew through almost $305 million in cash. And I think you're looking at Fisker next year and why the market remains so concerned and why you're seeing the stock down almost 20% there's probably liquidity concerns uh, regarding Fisker. Now, they, I think they noted on this release that they have $650 million in total liquidity, but at some point to bring that vision to life by Henrik Fisker, they're gonna need another capital raise. And at what point does that person or that bank say, we're not giving you this capital, it's a Tesla market and we don't really care what you're doing. And they're struggling already, right? We talk <laughs> well, I think it's quite clear from this information that these analysts here on Yahoo Finance, why I don't buy any uh, companies w while watching people like this who are paid, who are sponsored, who have short positions. I never short stocks. Flipping obvious. I am, look, I don't care whether you buy Fisker or not. I'm not in it or not. And if I was, I wouldn't care whether you bought it or sold it. I don't care. I am just trying to give you the accurate, real, honest information. What they're doing right now 
is uh, slanting the news. I don't know why they need to bother. I mean, it's a Tesla market anyway. It's like, who the hell are you? Are you working for Tesla telling everybody that Fisk is a load of rubbish just because you want to promote... Uh, this is why I don't you I don't do any uh, analysis by listening to these type of people. Unbelievable. Talk about a lot of the fact that production supply that has obviously been a massive issue, not just for Fisker but for so many of the smaller. And five minutes ago, by the way, CNBC and all the working lunches and Jim Cramer were saying Tesla's rubbish. Tesla's rubbish. Oh, Elon Musk doesn't know what he's talking about. Now it's like. Oh, I don't think anyone needs to be doing EVs. We've got Tesla to do that now. Tesla's great. Unbelievable. Players within the EV market just simply because of how much it costs to produce an EV. So here you have some of the reaction on the street this morning and a lot of that being tied back to deliveries mm -hmm. and their potential here to ramp. Uh, Morgan Stanley, Adam Jonas there. One of those analysts weighing in right away on this report saying that ocean deliveries are ramping, but so is its inventory. Obviously not something that Fisker wants to see at this time. Looking ahead, he's saying that the direction of the stock is going to be driven by their ability to ramp ocean deliveries. Does, does Tying Adam, it all does, back to demand. Does he have a Fisker? Whether does or not that's Fisker? there. I Do we know? It. He never comes on with us. What's with this guy? What's with this guy? Yeah. Come on with us, Adam Jones. I bet you he's probably a Tesla. Probably a tennis guy. Tesla. No. Yeah. Maybe he drives a Ford pickup yeah, truck. Exactly. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, a lot of people do. Uh, look, just key to remember here, this was a company that went public via SPAC. Um, of course, the kind of marker to remember that they go public at, or at least that the SPAC uh, and then the D SPAC takes place at. $10 usually, and then this company traded eventually as high as $28.50 a share. You look at it today, it's trading at about... Oh, that's, that's, that's obviously, a, that's obviously an, uh, a very uneducated, very silly comment to make. Let me be absolutely clear. SPAC, Special Purpose Acquisition Company. A lot of businesses have gone uh, 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 SPACs. SPAC King, we know about Chamaf. Everyone gets excited about Virgin Galactic. You remember that video I did with that guy who tried to say it was all rubbish and Chamaf has stole all the money and blah, blah, blah. And I completely debunked the entire Virgin Galactic story that that guy was coming up with. This guy is trying to, try and do the same thing. Recently, SPACs statistically haven't done well, not because they're SPACs. Just because statistically SPACs haven't done well is not because they are SPACs. It means the businesses themselves weren't doing so well or whatever reason. Not because they're SPACs. He is trying to suggest that Fisker is rubbish because it was a SPAC. Five minutes ago, this guy and the other panel on this team right now were saying Virgin, uh, was Tesla was rubbish when it was going against Ford and it was taking money from the government and blah, blah, blah. It's a startup. It doesn't deserve to be in the arena with Ford. And now Ford are getting out of the business and they can't even compete with Tesla. This is really bad journalism, trying to grab headlines, trying to come up with rubbish. Now, again, I'm not sponsored. I am not paid by Fisker or anyone to make reviews. I don't even own shares in Fisker one way or another, but I am trying to deliver the information to you that's real. This is clearly manipulated rubbish. Well, it's a SPAC, so it's bound to be rubbish. No, you're talking rubbish. $3.39 before the market opens. So there we go. Anyway, what a lot of rubbish that was. Let me uh, let me look. Oh my god. Let me look at the sentiment. That's not a, that's not your value. If, if you do not value, uh, make judgments on stocks by listening to people on Yahoo Finance. Flipping rubbish, reading off scripts and what somebody else has told them what to say. Not using their own minds at all. Anyway, last ninety days. Last 90 days, uh, negative information was 28%. A lot of negativity around the stock the last 90 days. Last 30 days, that negativity has shrunk to 12%. Last seven days, negativity has gone to 3.3. Well, according to uh, Yahoo Finance, you've got every reason to throw it in the toilet, according to them. And today, we've got just positive news. Oh, well, that's a bit different than what you just said. Oh, well, there you go. Flipping rubbish. Um, so I'm going to uh, I'm going to tell you now what I think of this stock, where I see it going. Uh, by the way, there is my review. There's my earlier review. I did a review on this one month ago, and you can go and see my review one month ago. What I thought on the stock. Shall we shall we click on it? Let's have a look. What did I say a month Fisker, ago? Fisker ticker symbol F. SR. Now, this is the first time I've looked at this stock, so I'm reviewing it in real time live with you. 
Anyway, I haven't got time for that. But anyway, there you go. I reviewed it a month ago. Uh, so that'd be interesting to see what I said a month ago, wouldn't it? Anyway, so this is my thoughts on uh, Fisker to wrap up this review. Fisker doesn't, will not fail because it was a SPAC or because somebody on Yahoo Finance says it will because they don't like the fact it was a SPAC or they now think it doesn't belong in the market because, hey, Tesla can produce cars, so it doesn't need to exist. What a load of rubbish, number one. Number two, it's down, not because it's a SPAC, because it is dramatically shorted. We could have a short short squeeze. Uh, it could actually happen as I'm talking about it, live here on the show. Over 40% is extremely high. Um, would I buy this one right now? No, I would not buy it right now because I am all invested. My portfolio is balanced. I don't need uh, a stock to explode to make a uh, hundred, hundred thousand dollars and then ultimately a million dollars on my portfolio. I don't need that level of risk. Um, will, will it short squeeze? Very likely. Very likely, is it a good buy right now? Well, we can't say it's a very good buy right now because we don't have enough information. And we're certainly not going to go on what those flipping clowns have just said. All right, because what they just said was ridiculous. Okay, so right now, the intrinsic value looks great, but it's not reliable. So I, I, I can only make informed decisions on stock that actually has the fundamental facts in front of me, not the rah-rah from silly people on TV. So I can't buy it for that reason. Uh, the reason why I won't buy it today is because I'm fully invested, number one, and, and it would unbalance my portfolio. Number two, they don't have enough cash. I think they're going to have to dilute. They don't have enough cash available to be able to ramp up where they need to. They have too much long-term debt uh, at the moment, um, I would say that if they can dilute, but you don't want to dilute when the stock is so low. So how do you dilute? You need to raise funds another way. Maybe they can. I don't know. So I like the car. I think the car is great, but it's never about whether you like the car or not. Lucid's a great car, but the business is definitely going bust or private. So the car is great. The business is just not got any money. Um, so for an investment point of view, yes, it could probably short squeeze. It probably will short squeeze because the volume is there today. Um, so that could happen. We looked at the bids and uh, they, uh, they do seem to be uh, trending up rather than down. But again, level two data is manipulated. So it could go lower before it goes higher. It is running out of money. It's not the right investment for me, but I am going to keep my eye on it. Um, and uh, there you go. Leave me your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, I'm now going to give you the links how you can get the information that I use, unbiased, real information that, make, that will enable you to make informed decisions whether or not to buy the stock. Very, very important. Click above my head and uh, you'll get the link to my alpha spread and all my social media so I can answer all your questions live on the show. Look, also, they're all in the description. And over here, I'll put my full uh, uh, review, uh, my full playlist uh, of my alpha spread reviews. I've reviewed about 48 companies now. And this is my Meet the CEO uh, series down here and go and check that out and invite the CEO of this company to join me. There we go. So there's my review. You can have a review if you're one of my members and I'll do this and put this out as a main video later on. Until next time, as always, take care of yourselves and each other. Oh, by the way, did you want to win yourself a hundred bucks? Well, click above my head and down below, you'll find a link to our hundred dollar cash giveaway. Till next time, take care of yourselves and each other.